All right, we are going to work on verifying some identities and also just simplifying trigonometric expressions. We're going to start by simplifying trig expressions. You will want to have um, a list of the basic trig identities. Here are the first six, the very most ba basic, that cosecant is 1 over sine, secant is 1 over cosine, cotangent is 1 over tangent, and then sine is 1 over cosecant, cosine is 1 over secant, or excuse me, sine is 1 over cosecant, cosine is 1 over secant, and tangent is 1 over cotangent. Okay, you should have these. If you need to pause and write those down, that might be a good idea, um, but there may be somewhere you can just print a sheet of them or maybe have them in your text. So here are the others, the other basic identities. Tangent is sine over cosine. Cotangent is cosine over sine. We have this set that comes from the fact that cosine squared plus sine squared is equal to 1. Um, from that, we get these identities to go with it. Um, if you solve this equation for sine squared by subtracting cosine squared from both sides, you get that sine squared is 1 minus cosine squared. And here, cosine squared is 1 minus sine squared if we were to solve this equation for cosine squared. And finally down here, 1 plus tangent squared is secant squared. Um, a lot of people like to include here if we were to solve this for tangent squared so that we know what tangent squared is equal to. We would have to subtract 1 from both sides. So another one you may want to include if it's not on your sheet is that tangent squared is 1 minus secant squared theta. And same here, solve that equation for to cotangent so that if you have a cotangent, you have another way to write it. Um, it is cosecant squared minus 1. So these are the identities you need to have handy as you are trying to simplify trigonometric expressions and trying to verify identities. There's kind of just a set of tricks. Um, when it says to simplify, it means to remove all parentheses and then use the identities to break it down as much as you can. Okay, so here we start with this one. Let's remove the parentheses. We would do that by distributing secant. Secant times secant is secant squared. Secant times cosine is secant times cosine. That's about all we can do right there for now. Um, well, let's see if using identities we can simplify this any more than it is. Um, we notice that here we have cosine and secant. Um, let's try to write these in a different way. So let's change, since everything's in secants right now, let's change this to secant form. We know from our identities that cosine is 1 over secant x. So when we multiply, okay, uh, well, secant times 1 over secant gives us secant over secant, okay? And what is secant divided by secant? Well, that's just 1. Okay, so we wrote it so that first we got rid of our parentheses by distributing. And then we noticed we had everything with secants except for this. So we know we could write cosine as 1 over secant, and we did so. And that's brought us to secant squared x minus 1. Now, in our identities, is there anything, a lot of times when they're squared, that's equal to something. Is there anything that secant squared minus 1 is equal to? In your identities, you should see that. That is the same as tangent squared x. So that is as simplified as it's going to get. All right, here's another example. We're asked to simplify 1 plus cotangent x squared. So first we need to get rid of those parentheses. Um, one misstep people make sometimes is they just square both parts, but that's not what squared means. It means to take something times itself. Okay, so we would write this out just to make sure we don't mess it up. 1 plus cotangent x times 1 plus cotangent x. I'm going to FOIL. 1 times 1 is 1. 1 times cotangent is cotangent x. Cotangent x times 1 is another cotangent x. And cotangent times cotangent is cotangent squared x. Combine any like terms. So here we have a cotangent plus a cotangent means I have two 
cotangents, and then I have plus cotangent squared x. Now, can I make this any smaller? Can I reduce it down any more? Well, 1 plus 2 cotangent, that doesn't really give me anything. Everything is written as cotangent. But notice if I rearrange this, I do have 1 plus cotangent squared x, and that is one of my identities. What is 1 plus cotangent squared x equal to? Okay, hopefully you said that it's equal to cosecant squared x because it is. So now we have cosecant squared x plus 2 cotangent x. And that's the furthest we can go. We can't really break it down any more than that. All right, here's something else we would like to simplify. Well, we have a fraction here. Um, notice we have cotangents, secants, and cosecants. So we may want to try and write them all um, in sines and cosines. Um, but first, I notice I have one of my identities up here. Cotangent squared x plus 1 is equal to what? Look on your identity sheet. What is it equal to? Well, it's equal to cosecant squared x. So now we have cosecant squared over secant squared times cosecant x. Right? Well, that means we can reduce this fraction because we have in the bottom secant times cosecant, and in the top we have cosecant squared, which I'll break down a little just in case. Um, remember, cosecant squared means cosecant times cosecant. You don't have to write that step. I was just writing it out so that you'll understand, If just in case you'll understand this next step. So I have a cosecant in the top and the bottom that can be canceled, and that leaves me with a single cosecant x in the numerator and a secant x in the denominator. What is cosecant over secant? What is that equal to? Well, for now, nothing. <laughs> you may recognize it and be able to write it straight from here. If not, let's try one more thing. Um, cosecant is what? It's 1 over the sine of x. And secant is 1 over the cosine of x. We have a fraction divided by a fraction, which we, our rule for fractions is that you invert the second fraction so we invert the denominator here and multiply. That gives me cosine x over sine x, which is cotangent. So that one took quite a path. <laughs> but this that started looking like this simplified using identities and simplification to just cotangent x. All right, here is our final one that we are going to simplify. Cotangent squared x minus cotangent squared x cosine squared x. Well, the first thing that I noticed is I have a cotangent squared x in both terms. I don't have parentheses here, so this is going to seem a little backwards. But since I have a cotangent squared in both terms, I'm going to factor out cotangent squared. The first term, that leaves me with just 1. The second term, it leaves me with just cosine squared x. And look at that, we have one of our identities. What is 1 minus cosine squared equivalent to? Well, if you look at your identity sheet, you have 1 minus cosine squared is the same as sine squared. Okay. Well, from here, what am I going to do? I have parentheses again. I could try and multiply those together. Let's try, since we have a sine and a cotangent, let's try writing everything in terms of sines and cosines. Okay, so cotangent is cosine over sine, which means cotangent squared would be cosine squared over sine squared. Okay, again, these are all on your identity sheet. You'll want to have that very handy as you're doing these. So now I have cosine squared over sine squared times sine squared. Well, I have a sine squared in the top and the bottom. I can cancel those, and I'm left with just cosine squared x. Okay, 
So keep an eye out um, for your identities. Um, have the sheet right there with you. Uh, they will be used a lot <laughs> and just work through it. You may have to start over if something doesn't work out quite the way you thought.